Let's get right into this. I got these markers at Five Below for only $5, which is super surprising because there's 21 of them, which comes to an amazing four cents per marker. These are all the colors when they're swatched. I'm just going to overlay some colors on top of each other and the primaries and see what they look like and how well they lay on top. They actually look pretty good. This does not look like a purple at all. It looks more of a brown, and but this does look like a green. You cannot see any orange between the yellow and the red, but it's really nice to know that you can make this in-between color with the blue. I'm going to make some art pieces over here, so I'll sketch some ideas and then see what they look like. Recently, I've been really into the idea of like an eel and like their teeth. Recently, I've been really inspired by eels or like sea creatures, so maybe I want to do something inspired by that. I have a weird little guy there inspired by snake's teeth. I'll put up the photo now. And this, I don't know if they're the same illustration, but now that I'm overlaying them, I, I kind of like that. I've been really inspired about how this blue overlays with the other colors, so I'm thinking maybe the eel can be like trapped in this thing of floating water. This is the idea I like. I'm thinking maybe it's like a seafood restaurant with this little guy. Um, and I really do like how the colors work on top of each other with the blue. I think this might be what I'm going with. Starting off this piece, I really wanted to capture the idea that this dragon thing was keeping the eels hostage in like a little ball of magical floating water. So that's what I ended up going with in the corner and then I wanted the dragon guy to look at, at them. Um, in the end, I did forget to make his eye face up at them and accidentally made it go the other way, but that's okay. It still looks good, and it looks more like the character is focusing on the customer or someone walking into the shop. On the dude's desk, we have two pieces of paper, one talking about an eel soup sale and the other talking about who knows what because half of it is bitten off or torn off by one of the creatures in this place. A cute aspect I decided would be a little gotcha machine, but like a bunch of them piled on top of each other, so you can't really tell what it is, but the thought that went into it is what I executed. In the corner, we have this little eel trying to slip out of a hole in the desk, and there's a little guy like helping him out. That's actually a Japanese giant salamander. Um, I'll talk more about the colors I chose for that one later. Here's the finished sketch. Now I'm gonna ink it and color it. I was on Pinterest looking for inspiration on eels and their colors, and I decided that I was gonna make the one yellow because I thought yellow was really nice. Now, none of these patterns are actually eel patterns, for uh, the yellow one actually has black in it instead of that orangish red, but I went with it anyway because I thought it would be cute. The other two eels are the same pink and red that I used earlier because I wanted to stay true to the design and I might just have not known what to do anyway. In the top corner of the room, I have a little poster that says, Warning! Eels tend to escape. See something, say something. Which really hints to that little eel escaping out of the desk while the Japanese giant salamander tries to get him out. Now, by this time, I was ready to put on the water for the eels, which was going to be my favorite part before I realized that after a while, the water became really grainy. So when you layer over colors, it becomes like this grainy weirdness. I didn't really notice until after I put all the water down, so then I just kept layering it because I was like, ah, oh, you know, shading. By the way, the water does not shade very well, so something about these markers just don't lay on top. I actually really did notice this when I was layering on top the pink over the pink to try and get shading on the little dragon guy's mouth. Um, it did end up darkening after a while, but when I first did it, it was super bright pink. 
I had a little corridor thing or like a door that I drew yellow. I originally was thinking, oh, maybe I can draw like the inside of the building, but I realized that is way too busy. So I decided to go with yellow. Maybe it's like sunset or it's the light inside of it, or maybe it's just the walls colors. Some parts of this illustration, I decided to draw pink because I was like, oh yeah, this would be cute. Like the little clips of the posters on the desk, but I ended up like erasing those really quickly with some green over it. So it made this actually bluish color. I don't understand how these markers work. Or like on the head of this dragon creature, it looks pink, but I ended up going over it so many times it turned into a purple and I ended up putting over some of the blue to make it green. Something kind of silly I noticed about this marker set is that they have absolutely no brand name, like at all. On the box it says illustration marker set, but on every single marker it says illustration marker. Um, all my other markers have names on them, like I have one from South Africa called Mont Marte, which is a brand's name, and I have another one, I can't read it very well, it's called like Mio Dian. And then my favorite one is the Debo and Chevo, or Debo and Chevo. I don't know how to pronounce it either, which is really funny. Um, so maybe they made it like this so I could read it because I can't read any marker names. Over here, I'm going in with the plant colors. And as you've seen, I have decided to make the giant Japanese salamander pink, which is really interesting because they are like not pink at all. I'll put up a picture right here. So this is what they look like. And I was like, oh yeah. This is definitely gonna be pink. I thought the pop of color would be nice, but honestly, it just kind of makes that one corner weird. Um, at this time, I'm kind of going in with like different colors to make them less pink on the bottom, but you can't see because my paper's all the way down there. Um, <laughs> I keep shoving it down there. Then I was like, all right, what color do I shade with? Because the pink just gets weird when I shade. So um, I ended up using blue. I was trying to go in and shade a lot of these areas, but the markers would just not lay on top of each other properly, so you can't see very much shading with the yellow in the background or like the brown on the desk. But I tried my hardest, so there's that. These are the colors so far. I think I'm going to line it some with glitter pen and most of it with fine liner because I want it to look nice. I think it'll really tie the whole illustration together. As for what I just said about how the fine liner really ties everything together, I was completely right, which is probably why this is my favorite part of any illustration. You can really see where the blobs of color go from like random blobs of green and blue to like, oh, this is water and oh, this is a plant and oh, this is a poster and now I can read things on it. Um, it really just helps everything pop. I've seen lineless art styles and I think they're super cool, but for my style specifically, it would not work out unless I used maybe like gouache but alcohol markers bleeds a lot which is why I'm using um, cardstock paper so it doesn't bleed as much so you it really gets fuzzy and weird mixed up without any like lines around the illustration Earlier, I spoke about the eyes of the dragon, and as you saw maybe in the original sketch, they were not facing the front, they were actually facing back, so they were like, oh, let me like keep an eye on these little eel guys. Um, that didn't really happen, but I think it's cooler because it looks like someone had just walked into the area and they're like, hi, could I get a uh, eel soup? Because they're hungry. I mean, if you are a shop owner, it'd be only right to direct all your attention to the customer who will be buying all of the things you sell there. And now I am almost finished inking my piece. This is the finished illustration. I'm actually pretty happy with how this came out. And for the markers, I actually really suggest them for beginner artists because they're cheap and they're easy to access if you do have a five below in your area. I'm not sure if they're at every five below, but hopefully they might be. I just have some trouble layering, but if you're new to like markers, then this is a great opportunity to like try it out. So thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed it.